The first part speaks about the vine and the branches. Our Lord tells us that uh, He is the vine and we are the branches. It's important that we remember that we are not the roots, we are the vine. <laughs> we are the branches. Every once in a while, the branches have to be trimmed. But the gospel takes us a, a little bit more serious turn. And our Lord says, I, I don't call you any more slaves, I call you friends. Maybe in our culture, friends are people who go out and drink beer together, <laughs> or acquaintances, my friends. But in that culture, a friend, to be a friend, for instance, of the king meant that you had access to the palace night or day. If you needed something, you could go right to the king. If he needed something, he would come right to you. Friend had a special status, a friend of anybody. Because I think our Lord is telling us that um, I am accessible for you 24-7. You can approach me 24-7 either way. And I think we all un pretty well understand what that means. It's not the things about the Bible that I don't understand that bother me. It's the things about the Bible that I do understand that bother me. Stop and think about really what friendship is, you know, in a marriage. A lot of times couples will say, my husband is not only my husband, he's my best friend. Or that's my wife. And she's not only my wife, she's my best friend. It means that we lay down our life for each other. There's a deep, deep relationship there. The Lord is always available, He's always listening. We should be able to communicate. Now, people have trouble communicating sometimes. You know, some people think prayer is just, Jesus, I love you, Jesus, you're wonderful, Jesus. We should be able to pray and to talk to the Lord in whatever frame of mind we are. Lord, I've had a miserable day. Lord, I've had a happy day. Lord, I need help. Lord, help me to deal with this or whatever it is. We should be able to be honest in our prayer. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Sometimes it's not easy to formulate prayers. I mean, uh, so that's where I think the Psalms come in as an aid because we can take those 150 Psalms and we can find something that matches our feelings as David expressed all of his emotions. And we're able to use those psalms to pray to the Lord, to guide us at least, to keep us, to keep the conversation going. Because some days you just can't express yourself. The psalms help you to do that. Uh, all the moods that a person can experience <laughs> in a lifetime, you know, there are 150 psalms, but they might have 250 categories at the back of the book of Psalms that said, when you're sad, when you're tearful, when you're upset, when you're happy, whatever it is, you can find which psalm goes with that feeling for the day. And that's very important for us to, uh, to make use of the psalms in that way. A famous lady, she was talking to, to a group of graduates from a college, and she says, I know you have all these aspirations for your life, what you want to be, what you'd like to attain. At, when you reach the end of your life, it's not going to be how much money you made or which career you were successful in or not successful in. The question that will be on your mind is, did I spend time with my loved ones, with my family and my friends?